Hi there, welcome back. You have cabin fever? I know I do. Everybody gets something like that this time of year, just itching to get out there and do something, just to, and hardly wait for spring. And today we're trying to help with that. We're going to make some more fun, different recipes, um, something you might not have made for years. We're going to make snickerdoodles, something the kids would love to help come in the kitchen and help you make this winter. And we're going to make those in just a minute. But right now, I know a lot of people are itching to get out there and do some gardening. And unfortunately, it's, it's going to be a while. But there are some things that you can do right now. In fact, you should be doing right now to get you all ready for spring. And uh, Dan Frazier, uh, from the Master Gardener Association uh, at the Green Bay Botanical Gardens is going to show us some, some fun things that we can do right now to help cure that cabin fever. I'm Dan Frazier with the Green Bay um, Master Gardener Association and today Amy we'd like to show some of your audience how to uh, construct a raised bed garden. Um, this setup here what we have is our, our actual raised bed. Uh, what you want to do is when you pick out your lumber, what we have here is a 2 by 10 lumber that we're using to construct our garden. What we did was we purchased a 16 foot piece of lumber and had it cut into four 4 foot sections and we had this done right at, at the place where we, we purchased our lumber. Um, when you do purchase your lumber, one of the things you want to keep in mind is you want to get make sure it's untreated. You don't want it treated with any chemicals. Um, and the reason for that is so the, the chemicals don't bleed into your soil and contaminate your plants. Uh, when you construct your, your box, you want, want to do it on a flat surface, like on a patio or a driveway. When you're constructing your, your uh, box here and putting, fastening it together, what you want to do is pre-drill three different holes, one in the, towards the top, one towards the middle, one towards the bottom, and you're going to fasten it with wood screws, and you're going to want to make sure that it goes through your first board and into your second board. So this is actually inch and a half thickness here. So you're going to have to have like about a two and a half inch screw to uh, fasten each each corner here. Um, just for purposes, these brackets that you're seeing here are just holding our box together. They're not part of the uh, the finished product. When you do get done constructing your box and you find a location where you're going to locate your box. The first thing you're going to want to do is put down this weed barrier. This will prevent the weeds from, from growing up into your garden. And uh, you can pick this up at any uh, garden center. And if you don't want to use something like this, you can also use newspaper as well. Um, once you put your weed cloth down, you can put your box on top of that. And you can always trim the excess weed barrier. Once you have your box constructed together, the next phase is, by, is to put your soil together. Um, and we have three different components that we use for our soil mixture. Uh, first one here is compost. You can get this free at any uh, um, city or mun municipality. Um, the second thing um, we have is peat moss. And the third thing we have is perlite. And these two items you can purchase at any uh, garden center as well. And what you're going to want to do is put a third of each into your box here. You can mix it inside the box, or you can place it on a tarp and mix it on the tarp and then transfer it to, to, the, uh, to the raised bed. Um, and once you do that, you're going to want to wet it down, and then you're going to have to put some more in to, to top it off. And that's pretty much what your soil mixture is going to consist of. Um, from year to year, you may want to add more compost because that's going to continue to break down. And what we did for uh, our grid system here was we picked up some plastic strips here and used these to construct our grid system. You can, uh, we just for purposes here, we, we use Velcro, but you can screw them in, um, nail them in. It's, it's up to you. Something that we have constructed here is our uh, trellis system. What this is made of is uh, just PVC pipe, and we constructed it with uh, the corners here, uh, where your pipe slides into to the corners. Once once you have it constructed, you just want to slide it into with uh, these metal brackets here, and over your rebar that you've got it pushed into the ground, because that's going to give you more stability. What you can do then is pick up some trellis netting that you can put onto this frame that we built here and attach 
that with some zip ties. And that way, if you have any vertical plants that you're growing, it'll just grow up this, uh, this system here. One of the other options for this box is you can actually put a plywood bottom on it, attach it to the, to the bottom, and have four legs, one in each corner, about four feet high, and attach it to, to each corner. And that way, you don't have to bend over and uh, do your gardening. You've got it, got it raised on, on the legs, and uh, uh, it'll save you a lot of backache and, and headaches. This is uh, an excellent option for uh, growing different plants. You don't have to grow all carrots in this, this box itself. With this grid system, you can plant 16 different varieties of, of plants. Um, if you look at this, there's just nine because it's, it's a three by three instead of a four by four. Um, so there you have it, folks. That's your uh, raised bed gardening options. Um, you'll have a lot less weeding. You won't have to worry about turning uh, soil over every year. And it's a well-drained uh, uh